If you've ever been concealed carrying and you gave somebody a hug and they felt it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. <laughs> like and comment. Comment section is out of control. I will never control you. If you guys are looking for the biggest support of the channel, the biggest support of the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. 99 cents for that first month after that. Price goes, goes up. Is it worth it? Depends, are you buying things? If not, it's not worth it. We of course have Vertex and LEX ammunition for all of your ammunition needs or uh, gloves, bags, all that kind of stuff. Discount code Grantham. Ladies, gentlemen, and my often forgotten, but not by me, AT4s. Welcome to the channel. Today, we have a guest on right here. So we have Shooterugi. Um, I don't want to spoil too much. Go ahead and introduce yourself to these people. Uh, well, <laughs> how y'all doing? I'm Shooter Rugi. I was a Marine, infantryman, 0311, out in a 13 Alpha Company in Hawaii. And then from there, I went to contracting in the Middle East. Um, That's awesome. It's firearms instructor and security. You glossed over so much right there. <laughs> so, so first off, I know my Marines are freaking out right now. They've got just like veins bulging in their necks thinking about you being a Marine. So can you talk a little bit about that for a second? Uh, well, I mean, I wanted to be a Marine since I was 13 years old. Oh um, yeah. You know, 9-11 happened when I was a child and uh, then when, it real, when I was old enough to realize what was going on, I, I wanted to do something. Um, it just turned out I got in at a time where honestly not much was happening. What years were you in? 2013 to 2017. Okay, now you said Hawaii. And there's a pretty famous uh, group in Hawaii. I don't know if you've heard of them, k -Bay. Ooh, bastards of k -Bay. <laughs> Good yeah. guys, I know um, those guys are freaking out. Now you're one of them, aren't you? I, I am, you know, I've been following them for years and you know, I was there. And actually that's uh, that's where my page on Instagram blew up was uh, they sent me a message. That's and, really cool. Uh, yeah, they asked me, is it all right if we share this, you know? Someone yeah. else has already done it. And once I did that, it was, an atom bomb from there. It just went off from there. Now, I'm sure everyone's kind of wondering, we'll kind of bounce around a little bit here, but I mean, let's let's get into it. What are you talking about? What what did they what did they say? What were they asking that was okay to post? They were wondering if it was all right they tagged my name in a post of a uh, a riot in Seattle just mm -hmm. a little over a week ago now and some actions that I had taken to uh, dispel that. So this last Saturday, I, uh, I took some actions. There were some police rifles stolen from some vehicles and uh, I made moves to make sure I confiscated them. They wouldn't be used to harm. And uh, that's, that's what got blown up on the internet. And you, so much was just glossed over. So we have to go into it. So if you guys haven't seen the clip, we're gonna play it right now. Okay, so that's a pretty intense clip, but all we saw right there was maybe 12 seconds. And that was the second rifle I had confiscated. That was the second one. That was the second. So you had a rifle on your back. That was. It okay, was a, uh, let's rewind for a second here. What were you doing there? I was there as security for a, uh, a news crew. That, okay. You know, they're pretty big in the area and they needed to, uh, they needed someone there to protect them because there was rioting going on, not protesting. It was, it was getting a little crazy, a little yeah, squirrely down there. Yes, vehicles on fire and everything. Now, so the area that you were in, um, what, why were there were police vehicles on fire? Why? Uh, the, police ve the police could not get to them. Really? All right, okay. So I spoke with them afterwards. Um, they had several different fallback positions uh, mm -hmm. around downtown, and it just turned out that that was one of them that was dead in the middle of the riot. And uh, short of loss of life to both sides, they could not get to them. Jeez. So yeah. it was. It was. You're pretty much on your own out there when you got out there. I, I was. Yes, absolutely. I was on my own. I had my two from my team, but the camera crew, you know. So you you were in charge with making sure that they were safe. Yes, sir. While you're out there. So the first rifle. What happened? So when I first got on that corner with my crew, the uh, I saw these police vehicles and that they were busting into them. And the first thing on my mind is patrol rifles. And there's mm -hmm. definitely something in there. I got to keep my eye on that in case it turns. And uh, I got lucky because I was able to, I watched it, I watched them when they pulled that first rifle out of the, win the window. And uh, oh, you watched them pull it out. I watched them pull it out wow, from okay. the passenger window. <clears throat> um, and as they pulled it out, he got into the middle of the street. Someone was yelling, clear the block multiple times. And I got my hands on my crew. And as I'm pushing them, I watched them fire four rounds. There were four rounds fired into those vehicles. Jeez. 
and uh, I got my crew to safety behind the cover. I told them to stay the fuck there, and because uh, I needed to eliminate the variable of them moving. Yeah. I needed to make that clear. Um, once that happened, I slung my vertex um, <laughs> to, to the front of me. Little plug. Yeah, and uh, I drew my pistol from my bag, and then uh, yeah, I had a plate in there too, so I was smart enough to have that. So I zipped okay. it, threw it back, and by the time that I had drawn my pistol and made my way to him, I watched him duck into an alcove of a uh, building into a doorway. And uh, I saw him sticking out of the corner of that, and he had no idea I was there. I mean, I was completely under the radar to anyone that was there. Um, but I knew from the second I drew my pistol, I was uh, letting myself be known that I was there. And I came around the corner, drop your weapon, drop your weapon, drop your weapon. He was shocked and stunned and conditioned black. Yeah. And uh, snatched that weapon from him and told him to get the fuck out of here. And then I uh, turned around and I made my way back to my team, but pocketed my Glock and I immediately cleared it, dropped the mag, uh, reverse that. And yeah. uh, broke the weapon down, put the bulk area group and tried to hand on my pocket. It's rendered safe to make sure that nothing else could happen should it get away from you somehow. Yes. Guy just stole an AR. Now, this guy, why did he duck into the Alco? What was he? What was he you know, there? I really don't know. Um, I think that from my deductions of the situation that he didn't really know what he was doing with the firearms. He yeah. did not look like it. He was firing it from the hip like good old Rambo. <laughs> and uh, That's the only way to fire. Right? <laughs> and he gets into that uh, doorway. And when I came up on him, he was actually facing away from me, looking down at the gun, trying to figure something out. Okay. But I, I got came up on him so fast, and I took it from him fast enough, I didn't really see, nor did I care. I just needed to get it. Now, how to, up to this point, have you ever, ever snatched a rifle from somebody? From a real threat? No. Maybe not a real threat, but, but have you ever, yeah. you ever grabbed a weapon out of somebody's hands? Oh, yeah. And w what was that experience from? Uh, firearms instruction, firearms training. Okay, so you've Absolutely. done a lot of firearms instruction up to that point. Oh, yeah, um, 100%. And so to me, it was this guy's actually firing away from me. It kind of felt like he was firing down range. <laughs> yeah. I came up to him because he just screwed up, and that boy's in trouble. So I took it. <laughs> Snapped that rifle right away. <laughs> so that was that was the first one. How how quickly after that you snatched that first rifle did you see the guy get his hands on that second rifle? So one different individual, correct? Different individual, okay. absolutely. From the time that I took the first one to the time I took the second one, it could not have been more than ten minutes, okay. but it could not have been less than five. Okay, there was a lot going on. It was a very, very dynamic situation, and now I'm trying to guard my team around a corner. And at the time, I actually had that rifle in, in the upper and lower receiver separated because okay. that's what I wanted to keep it. Yeah. But it didn't make sense. I need my hands, and I already rendered it inoperable, so I uh, put them back together and slung it. Um, Actually, what made me go around the corner is there was a flood of people that came past. Okay. And my first thought was these guys are getting, getting gassed and running. Hopefully the police are coming because yeah. I'm on phone with dispatch. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go meet them. So I didn't see them, but I was uh, just a little ways down the block, and I'm still looking and scanning, keeping that awareness up. And uh, I look left, and I see them pull the bag out of the back of the vehicle Jeez. and pull the rifle from the bag. And immediately you see him in the video like, oh, this is cool, but I was already coming on my drew from my pocket <laughs> the most natural holster we got and uh i made my way now a lot of people i don't think understand the situation that was going on at the time but most people would say that's not something you should be doing you should wait for the cops to handle that but you were on the phone with the cops you were trying to get them to help but they couldn't they couldn't there's nothing the, to be yeah, done yeah and that's no fault of the police of course um, the situation there there were literally thousands in the streets yeah i was in the uh the very middle of that riot not protest yeah and uh they couldn't get to us it took me three and a half to four blocks just to get to them Jeez. and when i got to them they were holding a line that they were outnumbered easily 10 15 to 1. the cop the cops and national absolutely. guard yeah, okay. absolutely wow um so I, yeah. I, I had no doubt that they couldn't get there and that they were trying, but 
Yeah, I was definitely, I'm just trying to paint a picture for people who weren't there. You know, it's easy for people to, to look at the situation outside of it and say, <clears throat> you should have done X, Y, Z, but really, I mean, there's a time to act sometimes. If you're ever, ever just showing a short video clip, no matter what it is, and that's all you know, yeah, you have no place to sit there and break it down. That, that's absolutely true. So this guy got, his, got that second rifle out, was holding it, and as soon as he had that out of the bag, like you were, you were eyes on this guy immediately. On, yeah. And you're like, not happening again. No, not one little bit. And the first time I had my team, I had to get my team to cover and he was able to fire four rounds. Um, and luckily I was able to, to figure out, you know, everyone there essentially, except me, but he didn't know that, mm -hmm. was on his side, on his team, if you will. Okay. And they all split and scattered and he mm -hmm. fired into the vehicles. Well, there was no one over there at the time. They all left, they all ran. I watched that happen. So I knew when he fired those rounds there that he was firing it in a safe direction, yeah. if you will, heavy, heavy air quotes. Yeah, heavy air quotes. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> not, not exactly a safe direction in No, a but there was no one there. Yeah. There was no one there because they had split. And uh, so I knew I didn't have to go and check that, but I got that and by that second guy, I was just I was gonna get to him before he figured out what he could do if yeah. he wanted to, because these guys had done nothing but escalate. Mm -hmm. Escalate, escalate, escalate. What are, you, what are they gonna do when they get their hands on a rifle? Yeah, it's not a good situation at all. Now, now, this is the video that everyone saw, and I've watched this video a couple times. You're, you're approaching this guy, and, and I mean, you look like any pissed off Marine that I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I just don't want to mess with you. So you approach this guy very aggressively, you, had, you drew your weapon, and immediately, I watched this guy, I was watching the video, and, I'm, I'm, and we talked about this before, but there was like a, a moment of hesitation where this guy still had his hands oh, on, that, step you about. on that grip, and I, I can only imagine the, the thoughts going through your head as you're approaching this guy. What was going through your head? So what, <laughs> there's a lot going on in I that know. one situation, know. you know, coming across the street like that. I had not a terribly long distance to cover, but I had to get to him quicker than he can get that rifle up yeah right <clears throat> and he didn't know I was there again like I didn't make myself totally overt in that first situation so when I came across the street I did it with my voice as well you know I projected yeah. drop that weapon very loudly <clears throat> and uh, with that I did I think I said it three times yeah and I came across that street quick now you made mention, I didn't notice this until you mentioned it yeah. I had a quick chop step there you did um, you know and it's 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 a lot like a football player trying to get the right position or yeah. a soccer player to kick, something like that. Um, I'm coming up and so much is happening. I see this guy with two hands on the firearm, Jesus, yeah. one hand on the fire controls, if you will, right? And I'm coming up to it and he realizes I'm there and the first thing he does right when I chop my step and I might have to decide what he's gonna do is he takes a hand off. I saw, yeah, I saw him lift that. Takes How, that was off. that, was that like a relief? Did you feel that relief when you saw him lift I that hand? Honestly, to be completely, I didn't feel shit the whole time. <laughs> I didn't feel shit. Fucking I Marines, do. dude. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't. I keep getting asked, were you scared? Were you this, were yeah. you this? No, I can't tell you. I wish I could because no, I'm, dude, a, I'm a guy that likes to be tapped into what's going on yeah. inside me. But no, I didn't feel anything. I just. I was filtering out information I didn't need yeah. and processing what I needed, and he probably saved his own life instead of reacting by taking his hand off. Yeah. Now, I think he took his hand off there and held down low because that's where the majority of the weight was. Yeah, yeah. Instinctive, right? We want to hold the heaviest part of it. Yeah, you're probably right. If you will. <laughs> <laughs> and he took his hand yeah. off, and I think that's really what saved him. And then yeah. my projection of voice, uh, violence of action and verbal aggression stopped him. <clears throat> now, he had he had a mask on, right? Yes. So you could just see his eyes. What was? Could you do you remember anything about his expression, the way he looked at you? Is there anything about it that <laughs> his his pupils dilate? Uh, <laughs> he was completely like Cooper's color code black. He was oh no black, kidding. One hundred percent. He did not know what was going on. He was very much that deer that you see in the headlights. Yeah. You know? So he got that adrenaline dump and <clears throat> he just froze up. Yeah, what do I do, you know? And that really shows you uh, what kind of people there are out there running around thinking they're hard. You know, there's so much to be said for training. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah.
like I don't think people realize this, <clears throat> but how much do you, how much training have you done? How much training do you have for this type of stuff? I mean, years, mar- years. years. Marine Corps, your Marine, your, you know, your, your time in service with the Marine Corps for mm-hmm. one, and then you've done some work after that too mm-hmm. as well. Absolutely, and even before that, I mean, I grew up with firearms. Yeah. I, there's pictures of me as a baby around antique firearms. I mean, the first lessons I ever had in weapon safety were getting very well disciplined by my father that uh, you know you shouldn't drop your firearm yeah and uh, the marine marine corps gave me that formalized training to grow off of from there but then you know it's also my passion it's something i love to do on my own and uh i think that out of that day that unique situation that happened twice uniquely Mm -hmm. the thing that i used the most was not just my intuition but it played a big part but i i saw them and i knew they didn't know what they were doing yeah they're untrained completely untrained Mm -hmm. right and I had framed my mindset before I even got in there that day on the drive-in of the decisions I was going to make depending on what situations arose. And I kept them somewhat vague and yeah. open, um, but I had those avenues open in my mind of what I was going to do. You know, I like the way you say that about mindset because that there is so much, so much goes into that. And Fieldcraft Survival talks about that quite a bit. So many good trainers do. Um, mindset is such a huge part of making sure that you're able to, act, you know, make those actions happen it's like uh it's like an athlete before mm-hmm. they do something they run mentally through what they're about to do and yeah. essentially you're just kind of pre-gaming and everything yourself same thing with competition shooters Absolutely. stand there stare at the yep. thing physically move through it and go over it over and over again but i i mean you can have the gucci's gear the coolest guns and everything but really what are all those guns using they're using you yeah if you don't train to be able to use all of them then it doesn't matter i mean that's, what are you going to do when you don't have a firearm that's that's absolutely true now speaking of that um we have to i have to ask uh the firearm that you used ah the firearm uh, well <laughs> happens to be right here oh that's weird <laughs> <laughs> glock 19 gen 5 with a uh, surefire x300u um awesome. very uh, it's 100 stock except I had a little stippling done. Yeah, I love the stippling on it, by the way. Yeah. Um, really nice. Who did the stippling? Uh, red Bear 2018, underscore between a red and bear. Un- underscore. <laughs> love it. Gotta that's awesome. That's some, that's some good stippling on there. It feels yeah. good. You know, there's a stock Glock 19 is just, they're great. You can't yeah. go wrong with them. And you know, I got this for many reasons. One, I mean, it was affordable. I needed something to carry and for yeah. work, for duty. Yeah. But also my... I build my kit, right? You know, I got my play carrier, my guns and everything for my kit, whatever use I have. And part of that mindset that I put behind it is if I have to source off of something else or someone else, yeah. what's the most likely thing I can source off of? It's true. It's absolutely true. Now, so you have the stippling job. The big thing with stippling is increased grip, all that. Seattle, as you know, is a wet, right. wet place. How, <clears throat> drawing that weapon, you didn't have any time to, you know, brush off, get a little dirt on your hand. Time out, everybody. Get ready. So when you when you went to grip that, were your hands soaked already? Oh yeah, I was. Uh, I was soaked to the gooch all day. <laughs> Just straight, a miserable day. Straight, straight so, soaked. That's what the I Marine Corps prepared it, you for. And you know, there were some times in jungle warfare training where I just Oof. had to fall asleep in the puddle and. It's a bad day. Yeah, maybe do a little sip in my hair and there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, and I I mean I had a job to do. I wasn't really focused on that. Honestly, I was probably would have been really hot. Yeah. If not, and that just kept me cool. Yeah. But you know, I messaged the guy afterwards, and I told him straight up, during the entire day when I had to have this pistol in my hand in mm-hmm. that whole situation, I didn't have one slip. And that's not just a plug. That's real. Like yeah. I told him, I need the most aggressive stippling you have because I know it's going to wear down. I know I have small hands. Yeah. I can grip them, but I mean, if you look, I can barely get my hand properly on the trigger. Yeah. So, but I mean, you got it. I'm I, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, stippling is absolutely necessary. You know, I think yeah. I think it's a really good mod to do to a gun. So, 100. percent Simple, agree. effective. You didn't spend much money on it, but you have a really effective firearm. And I gave it to him one day, and literally the next day, I had it back. Dang, for your local stipplers right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, you got the gun back from him. Um, I see in the video you took it. Um, his buddy like grabs him and kind of begins to pull him away. So you grab the gun. What's the immediate aftermath after distance. that happens? Yeah, I need distance. Mm-hmm. Though I'm there, I'm out there alone that day, and um, the number one thing is if I have distance, that's my space, that's my security, okay. because I know the only way someone can get to me through that is if they have some kind of projectile, right? Yeah. So whether it be thrown or shot or fired or uh, spit. Um, <laughs> so. I created that distance. I snatched it from him. I immediately took some steps back. So if he came after me, you know, I was compressed, ready, ready to go. Yeah. 
but uh, his buddy went back and took him to his baby crib right afterwards, so he was <laughs> fine. And you know, I kind of—it may be a little, little stupid, but yeah. uh, I kind of flicked my pistol and told him to get the fuck out of here. I did. I saw that, <laughs> and then we talked about this before. But uh, in the video, I saw you do that that pistol flick, and I said, "What was going? What would you say?" And you're like, "What do you think I said?" I said you told me to get the fuck out. Exact of words, one hundred percent. And you know what he did, and yeah. then it came. With, what's the next thing? You know, I have. This guy who just stole a police firearm from a rifle bag. There's a rifle bag on the ground. Yeah. I got rifle in my arm, rifle on my back, pistol in my hand, eyes up. The only thing I had left to do anything with, I had a right foot. So I stomped that bag out. Oh, and, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, I stomped that bag out to feel for anything. And uh, I didn't feel a firearm, didn't feel a pistol. And I'm, I mean, it's not 100% check, but it was enough to give me a good warm and fuzzy to move on from there. I like it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I noticed you had really good situational awareness as, as that was going on. That's something. That that is so hard to do in that type of situation is to maintain what's going on around you because in a fight or flight, big old saucer eyes, right? That oh, yeah. predatory response, you know, just zooming in on whatever you think that immediate threat is. So yeah. just crazy. Now, after after all that went down, after that clip ended, we see you clearing out that gun. What happened after that, man? Dropped the mag, rack, 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 threw it out. I mean, and then uh, immediately I need to get back to my team. So. This is where the main clip cuts or zooms out. The uh, first thing I did is put the Glock back in my pocket and yeah. uh, I broke the weapon down. I nice. kept my situational awareness up and uh, <laughs> kept my eyes up because at that point, what my hands are busy, my eyes are my weapon. I need to see what I'm doing yeah. um, and see what others are doing. So I broke it down off the rear pin. I pulled the bulk carrier group out just like the first one and the charging handle, put them back in my pocket, in my back pocket and uh, put it back together, slung it and got to my team. And now. Uh, and the worst part about that is, and I've told them this multiple times, is I made them a uh, target yeah. that day. You know, I, I drew all that attention to us. I mean, at the same time, what, what are you supposed to do in that type of situation? You know, there's so many, there's so many what ifs you can do in these scenarios. Yeah. But there's some, there, there's times that you just you need to act. Yeah. This guy was clearly firing a weapon into a, into a police car. This is not a, a safe environment. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so hard to know, man. But I think, I think I, I think I speak for a lot of people. I think you did. I think you did the wrong, right thing in that in that situation. Man. I hope so. I mean, I mean, there's, again, like I said earlier, if all you see is a little 10 second clip yeah. of a video you weren't a part of. There's Everyone a lot can, to yeah. There's a lot to dis decipher, and the things that I would have done better, they have no idea. You know, this happens. People had to have seen this happen. Mm -hmm. They probably when I first saw the clip, I, w I was like, is this a, a police officer? Is it, who is he? What did the crowd, how did the crowd react after they saw the second one? Ooh, um, yeah, the crowd did not act well. They, they did didn't not like react well, no. Okay. Um, I mean, I've said it before, I essentially just painted a line around myself that said, I am not with any motherfucker here. I am yeah. not here to do this. And uh, that line extended when I got to my team and it was around them. Jeez. And I had every single person that was around there was now on me and them. How'd you get out of that situation? like this the yeah. whole time three and a half to four blocks to get away from them a very very aggressive posture very aggressive violent language to get them away yeah um, and I was walking you know I was walking to get there um, and I had to have my crew in tow one of them ended up breaking off because they felt very unsafe with me and mm -hmm. you know I can't blame them but I can blame them um, <laughs> and that entire time I mean two people actually linked up with me that were trying to help out one American flag bandana, American flag on his shoulder. He's like, dude, I'm just here to help. And I was like, hell yeah, dude, nice. more the merrier. Mm -hmm. The next one came up and you know, I'm challenging these people. Yeah. Who are you, what the, what the fuck do you want? Yeah. You know, get back. And he's like, whoa, 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 I'm active duty, active duty. And I was like, what branch? Yeah. <laughs> First thing out of my mouth. And he uh, looks down and goes, Coast Guard. <laughs> no way. <laughs> My really? first response was better than nothing. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> better than nothing. Let's go. He's there. We're not. So. Yeah, he was there, and no one else yeah. was. And yeah. you know what? I was more than willing to have whoever I needed, or whoever was willing, I guess. And uh, we made our way back, and it got to the point he broke off somewhere. Yeah. And uh, American flag, dude. I I got to a point where I was like, all right, I don't know where these cops are. I'm yeah. on foot. I got my team in tow, and you still I, have the rifle slung at that point as well. Both of them slung, yeah. and I'm getting called a Nazi, a hater, a racist, you know, uh, all kinds of things. And crowd, are, crowd mentalities are wild. <clears throat> oh, it's yeah, straight up. It is the psychology behind that. I would say is fascinating, but it's terrifying. Terrifying. Story. And uh, yeah, and so I told this guy's like, look, I'm gonna hold here because if I'm going 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction, I'm going the wrong direction. That's yeah. not gonna help. So I, he's like, what do you need? Reassess. Scout. Yeah. I need you to scout. Run up, 
that way because I think that's where they are mm -hmm. and tell me where they are. So I held my team in the uh, in a corner of a like a, a corner door of a building, right? Yeah. So I had about a little more than 180 degrees security behind mm -hmm. me. You know, I could filter people through it and I had my team behind me. And uh, yeah, violent language, aggressive posture, pistol at the high guard the whole time, muzzle down. I wasn't flagging anybody. Yeah. Um, and he came back several minutes later, was like, they're this way. Nice. Excellent, dude, thank you, and uh, we made our way up. Man, you know what, it's, it's a tough situation, you know, and it's so easy to look back and second guess yourself on that kind of stuff, but yeah. you know, the fact of the matter is that you're alive and they're alive. Yeah, and I think about that, and you know, I think the things that happened that I would change, mm -hmm. it wasn't what I did that I would change, it's what I didn't do. Yeah. Well, Absolutely, well, I, would have, I should have cleared those vehicles. I thought yeah. about it before that first rifle, I thought about it after that first rifle, and I've thought nothing about it. I've thought nothing else about it since. I should have cleared those vehicles. But I mean, yeah, tricky situation. The right? situation also turned on you. Yeah, let's be. Uh, yeah, I, I got to be real about it. I'm one guy, You're one surrounded guy, by hundreds, and I got one one rifle out of there from uh, one of those guys. And honestly, the other vehicle wasn't broken into enough yeah. for me to access anyway. Unless yeah. I, you know, I discharged my weapon. But uh, you know, and, and here's the th here's the thing, you didn't have a lot of time. You know, it, the crowds turn on you. So I don't think anybody's going to fault fault you for it. But I think the most interesting part of this entire thing is that you saved both those guys from firearm felonies for jacking <laughs> police rifles. Because <laughs> that is that is a that is not a that's not a smart thing to do. No, not at all. And uh, they're they're looking for him now. Oh really? Oh yeah. yeah. So you're heading back to the cops to return the rifles. How'd that go? Very well, actually. Okay. Yeah, um, a lot of people thought that that was going to be a very significant point of friction for me. It wasn't, not at all. Um, what happened was, so I had two firearms for the police, and then I had a pistol. My pistol was loaded. So when I got to a point where the mob was no longer following us because yeah. we were getting close to the lines, I put my pistol in my pocket. You know, mm -hmm. um, that right there says I'm not actively a threat because I got a weapon out. Yeah. But then I had two rifles on my back. So what I did is I took them out off my back and I broke them down again mm -hmm. rear pin popped and uh, I hooked them over my arm I walked them in there like a cradle yeah <laughs> and I walked up there with very open body language yeah. that let them know I was not a threat and I, st I yelled at the officer hey I need to speak to you and at first he was you know standoffish yeah but uh, I was like no sir these are yours these are your firearms you need to take them he came up and he had the most puzzled look <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I can't blame the guy either. I, yeah. I think I would have one too. It's just a bizarre situation no, yeah. in, in every single case. Now, a lot of people are asking, and this isn't me, but why didn't you use the carvings? And that's, not, that's, from, the, uh, that's from the audience. Yeah, the audience. The audience. So they want to know why you didn't use the police carvings once you had your hand on them. It's a more effective weapon, obviously. It absolutely is. Now, there's a lot of answers to that. Yeah. And the first thing is they're not my weapons. Yeah. Regardless of whose they are, they were not mine. Do I know the sights on that? Is it zeroed for me? Do I know if it has a problem malfunctioning every few rounds, the magazines? Do I know what kind of ammo? Is it? No, I don't know shit about Spoken it. Spoken like a Marine, I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know shit about it besides that is a police firearm yeah. and I need to take it. Now, my other mission was to, you know, I escalated over these guys so that I could de-escalate the situation, right? Yep. So I got control of them. Now, I wasn't in a gunfight. If I was in a gunfight, rounds were coming at me, absolutely, I would have taken that chance to use a weapon I didn't know. And honestly, it probably would have turned out fine for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was trying to de-escalate. Now, yeah. turning it into a uh, you know a street fight in the middle of Seattle yeah. where I'm just shooting police rifles, it doesn't make any sense to me. So yeah. I broke them down, I made the decision I did. And uh, that, I think is probably the best decision I made that day. Absolutely. That's very good. So, I think everybody wants to believe that they would act and that they would do the correct thing. And it's so hard to know what the correct thing is when it comes down to it. So if you had any advice for people out there who, who just wanna, wanna believe that they're prepared for a situation that could go wrong, what would you tell them? If you believe you're prepared, start over do it again yeah because you're never prepared enough there are things even now like i said that i would have done differently how would you prepare more more training more mindset practice what would it be 
mindset practice I think can come from everywhere. There's books on combat mindset and yep. you know situational awareness, and those are great books. I've read several of them, but honestly, the best things that I've had about mindset didn't come from any of that. And, you know, it came from um, Tarzan. It came from yeah. uh, Theodore Roosevelt, Marcus yeah. Aurelius, stuff like that. Musashi. Mm -hmm. um, things things can influence you from everywhere but also i mean i've made this decision thousands of times yeah over and over that repetition it really helped absolutely and it, it definitely paid off in the situation man i hope so. you when i watched you execute you executed it efficiently efficiently quickly you escalated your action to the point necessary to get that rifle back and then just like you said you throttle off on that yeah. and you got control of the situation I mean, that's more than can be said for so many things, man. So you did some really good stuff out there. I appreciate it. No problem. Hey, man, I really can't thank you enough for coming out here and talking with me and talking with my fans. Um, I know they wanted to hear the story. I know you told it many times, but, uh, you know, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming out and everything, dude. I appreciate it, man. It's been fun. You know, guys, we've talked about it already. Get training. You know, tons of great people. We've talked about it before. Cogworks, Haley Strategic, 1-1 Bravo, Bear Esoteric. Solutions. Bear Solutions. Yeah. yeah, tons of great guys. Get that training because it matters. Uh -huh. It freaking matters. Now, usually, I just end it. And I don't give you any other advice. You know, I'm gonna leave it to you. You have any dad <laughs> advice for my people right now? All on you. Oh man, I've watched this scene happen no, so many times. No, pre no, <laughs> no preparedness, dude. <laughs> Nervous. Um, I was not prepared for this. I know. That's why I put you on the spot. Um, dad advice. All this is, all I tried to do that day and every day since and beforehand was be the best person I could be for me that fit within my moral guidelines. If you can't find your own moral guidelines, then find someone else that you revere and follow through theirs until you find yours. Love it, man. Some good advice. That's some good dad advice right there. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching with us. You know if you guys have uh, watched this far, I'm going to make a plug for Survival Dispatch. Survival Dispatch is a great site of survival seer information i'm a former survival guy that kind of stuff is important you know it 100%. too yeah absolutely so get in there check it out big shout out to my patreon guys love you guys so much thank you for watching i've got nothing else for you